Well, I'm a uh, film music composer, actually turning into a sound mixer and a, and a sound designer as well. I don't know how I've gotten into this genre, but uh, I'm doing a lot of horror and thriller films. So I'm always looking for that next new creepy piano or that, that violin that's a little bit out of tune, you know, that you can, you can play in these and really get kind of a creepy sound. There are millions of composers out there right now. Just like you said, it's very easy to get into it. You know, I guess you need a little bit of a background in music, so you gotta get your, get, you know, study your math and get study your music and music theory. And just getting a little experience and going to films, listening to them, listening to the soundtracks, what they're doing, trying to stay current, and getting the word out there. It's all about networking. Uh, you can be the best composer in the world, and if you don't know anyone or know the person that knows someone, it can be a real struggle and very frustrating at times. First film was here in Chicago. It was a documentary on the 2012 Chicago teacher strike and the Madison, Wisconsin, uh, Wisconsin teacher strike. I met the director at a film meetup. We sat down, we talked, I said, I'd love to do your film. Here's my card, and months went by. Didn't really ever hear from him again. All of a sudden, the phone rings and says, hey, you ready to do the film? So he came over, and we sat down, and painstakingly went through and did all the spotting for the music, what kind of music he wanted, and uh, he just loved it. And it was really my first time to really sit down with the director and really go through the, the whole process. In fact, you can see that, uh, that film on uh, Amazon Prime. There was an Addy Adam um, Audio release event here, you were here, in uh, Chicago. And so I went to the, uh, the showing, to the launch party, and uh, the speakers just blew me away. And I, I could no longer look back at what I was going to choose. I think I even told you at that release party that the looks of the speaker too really sold me. I think my comment was, is, wow, they look like they belong in the Batcave. I don't know, there's something about these ports you've got, the ribbon speaker and stuff, it just sold me. I got a crane to pick them up because they're so heavy and put them on there, and I mean that in a good way. Flipped it on and started listening to them, and it was just amazing. The bass thumps, it's down low, the ribbon speaker, you can tell that I'm sitting right at the level of it. It just comes out and just is just washing me in, in the, the, you know, the high frequencies. They're, they're just great speakers, just unbelievable. I wouldn't trade them for anything. Well, I'll flip these things on now and just, you know, like fire up a couple of the samples for different orchestral instruments, you know, and hit the keyboard. And it's just like, oh my gosh, I am in the uh, Chicago Symphony uh, Orchestra. I was literally mixing in headphones because I distrusted the speakers that I had before so much that I felt like the headphones, now I've got some good headphones, but I felt like they were giving me a better sound and representation of what I was listening to out here. Interestingly enough, when we went to the Adam uh, showing, we played a few of all the different composers and guys songs that were there. And when I heard mine come through the speakers, I went, hmm, okay, so the headphones lied to me a little bit. You know, just not, not too bad, but, but enough to be concerned. And so, again, that's why I came home, told my wife, honey, I'm, I'm sold. I found that the, the S3Vs are just spot on. So, you know, I, I, I get a product, I finish it, send it off to my director and most of them say, "Amazing, amazing! This is great." You know, I haven't, I haven't had, I haven't had one say, "This sucks yet," but I'm sure it's coming, <laughs> but not because of the speakers.